In this video, I'm going to share with you my chronic fatigue syndrome recovery. In particular, I'll share what I feel helped me the most over four years of recovering. Two main disclaimers. Firstly, I'm not a healthcare professional. This is just one person's story. Could be very different to your story for going through this. Secondly, this channel has nothing to do with chronic fatigue syndrome. So if you click or touch your subject for more info on this, instead you'll learn everything you want to know about erectile dysfunction, specifically after prostate cancer treatment, which is also an amazing topic to learn about, but might not be what you're looking for. So my recovery from chronic fatigue syndrome in no way at all looked like this. It was not linear. I often at times felt like I was making no progress at all while I was trying thing after thing after thing. It wasn't this one magic bullet solution. It was much more like cracking a code. This idea has come from Honor Eastley, who runs Big Feels Club, which is an amazing resource all to do with mental health strategies. And she relates the idea of cracking code for her um, mental health recovery. And I think it's very similar to chronic fatigue syndrome. In fact, actually, she's also gone through chronic fatigue and there's a wonderful episode I'll pop in the description box where she discusses that on Big Feels Club. So to structure what ended up being helpful, it ended up being three main areas with little things in each one. Along my journey, I identified things that need to be worked on in the physiological department. So things that physically had gone really squiffy in my system and needed intervention in order to help my body recover. And then secondly, learning how to improve chronic stress that was just happening in the background, in a way, rewire my nervous system in order to give my system, I think, the best chance as possible of all the physical things we were doing, the best chance to recover. And then I say the third category was tools and strategies that kept me going, kept me trying the next thing. Because ultimately this for me was a journey of turning over every single stone I could think of one at a time while not seeing honestly much progress for at least even the first three years with everything I was trying. So firstly, the physiological side of the equation. When I got chronic fatigue syndrome, it manifested after I had caught some kind of really intense virus. This was before the big C. I was doing, I was doing long COVID way before it was fashionable in 2019. Around May time, I caught some kind of virus that I just basically didn't fully recover from. I went to several GPs over the few months after that. I got prescribed, I want to say, two to three rounds of antibiotics because I was still presenting with a really sore throat, cough, a lot of the symptoms as if I just still was in an infection. But the main symptom I suddenly was experiencing I'd never had before really in my life was this pronounced, prolonged, just overwhelming intense fatigue. Along with that, I had brain fog. A lot of the time, I honestly felt like a single cell organism. I felt like I had absolutely no energy just at the actual core of my soul. I think if you haven't had fatigue, it's quite hard to imagine how this is different to feeling just extremely tired. Possibly just imagine the absolute worst hangover you've had. And if you've ever had that, maybe on top of the flu, you just barely can drag yourself out of bed, even to have a shower or get a glass of water. My particular fatigue ended up being very dynamic. So there would be some weeks where I was able to record a YouTube video, but then there'd also be weeks where I, for seemingly no reason at all, just yeah, really couldn't function. So for those, that first three years, I saw specialist after specialist. I tried GPs first, they'd refer me to immunologists, gastroenterologists. I wanted to really rule out intense physical disorder. Or it, that's what it felt like. It felt like my body was sending these alarm signals as if something had gone very, very wrong. I and mean, I really needed to figure out what it was. But what kept coming back was blood tests that show, showed no problem at all, slight indication my body was still fighting some kind of infection, but that was about it. And just any strategy we tried just didn't seem to get anywhere. I then went and tried the functional medical approach. I saw, I think, four different functional medical specialists in those first three years, but they, again, didn't help in a different way. <laughs> so they would often to prescribe so many supplements all at the same time, trying to target every area of my body. Their view of it was that almost every area of my body had dysregulated, that my whole, my endocrine system was off, that my gut, I had leaky gut, all sorts of things that they wanted to treat all at the same time. And often I'd be on hundreds of dollars worth of supplements, like feel were quite literally going down the toilet. And then a month into taking them, I'd maybe feel 5% better. Often I'd actually feel about 10% worse, but then I'd find it hard to even make a follow-up appointment. 
they didn't know what to say other than keep taking the supplements. So that also felt like a bit of a dead end. I found um, an, a recovery story interview with Christian Danis, who has a book coming out actually about what she's learned from her recovery, which she thinks marvelous because she has helped me so much. Her story resonated so much with me. She also had this sort of dynamic kind of version of chronic fatigue. So I reached out to her directly and I ended up hiring her to help me find the right team for me in Melbourne, Australia, which is where I'm based. I, I basically gave her the task of, I'm burnt out completely. I feel very jaded by the medical system. I'm not sure I'm the best person to be looking for the right person. I tasked her to find the person that she would have worked with if she was going through her journey in Melbourne. And the team she found for me ended up being absolutely spot on. They ended up being the functional medical approach. They were called Melbourne Functional Medical. They're based in South Melbourne, but I communicated with them entirely over Zoom, never had to go in in person. The way they work, which I think was the differentiator of what ended up helping me, they work with a person for a minimum of six months only. You get unlimited uh, appointments with both a health coach and also a functional medical practitioner. So any time that we would try a new supplement, I had somebody on a messaging channel that I could be corresponding with telling them what was going on with my symptoms. They worked tirelessly in a very detective-like way, doing all the tests we could think of in order to uncover what was going on with my body. And each time we treated what came up, I did feel that my capacity raised a little bit. They found I had a mold infection in my system that possibly was what triggered that first initial illness in 2019. We did a treatment of activated charcoal over several weeks. During that time, I did feel a sort of detox reaction. At the end, I did feel slightly better. So I thought that's a great one to have identified. And then the second one they found was a severe iodine deficiency. And again, starting to treat that, I felt a bit of energy capacity coming back from that treatment. And I had done a lot of various dietary approaches during the time I was ill. I had a lot of gut health issues, which very classically can come in that chronic fatigue umbrella. So we did a protocol of supplementation for that, tweaking that a lot to really suit my system. I had already tried a lot of different anti-inflammatory diet approaches, and I'm definitely not here to tell you what is the diet for chronic fatigue syndrome. I again think that's something that's part of everyone's personal code when it comes to their health. What ended up helping me the most was tr doing the FODMAP diet for six weeks to eliminate foods that are under that FODMAP umbrella. And then by reintroducing, I realized I had quite an intense intolerance to garlic and onion. Eliminating those from my diet ended up again, just helping bring back a bit more capacity. Second category or sort of bracket of the code that I felt I really needed to crack alongside the physical aspects was to do with nervous system regulation. So I got very excited about the idea of regulating my nervous system because those past three years of real wilderness within the medical system trying to figure out what was going on, I just started to feel more and more helpless, honestly. I felt, especially my symptom experience, felt so out of my control. I'd go to appointments, they'd say, well, what's triggering your symptoms? And I'd be like, if I knew that, I might not even be in your office right now because I'd probably figured out a way of helping myself through this by knowing the triggers. I couldn't figure out the triggers at all. It just led to this sort of, this real feeling of, of lack of control, especially when I was trying different interventions from different doctors and that also wasn't working. So something that felt much more in my control and especially I could do just during the experience of fatigue, because it's very boring having fatigue. It's frustrating by how boring it is. So something I turned to was various meditations and I've ended up with sort of a bit of a toolkit to help essentially create a healing environment in my body. So it's probably a very un-Zen way to approach meditation, but I really approach it from a sense of, if I can force my body to be in a parasympathetic nervous system state, which is the state the body needs to be in in order to heal, recover, and replenish, if I can force it into it <laughs> using meditation, then surely we'll have no option at all but to heal whatever is happening underneath the surface. Again, not particularly Zen-like way to approach meditation, but over time, I tried lots of different approaches and I found this sort of toolkit that I still use ongoing when I feel any kind of flare up or if any symptoms start to come up now. I find that that's often enough now to just 
bring my aroused nervous system down. If that's all sounded like absolute gobbledygook so far, I don't think I would honestly do it justice by trying to unpack it in what I'm hoping to try and keep as a shortish sort of video. One amazing resource is a YouTube channel done by Irene Leons, and she also runs a few online courses. I haven't personally taken her online courses yet. I'm still interested, maybe taking one one day, but she at least had some videos that talk about the importance of nervous system regulation, what that can do in a chronic symptom recovery journey. And also a wonderful resource. This was a paid online course that I did end up taking and I found particularly useful, especially in the explanation of regulating your nervous system and, and specifically actually meditations within that course on how to do it, which I used on a daily basis in order to help me uh, recover, was ANS Rewired by Dan Neufer. Okay, I actually did find that a wonderful resource and helped me to keep going. So I really thank Dan so much for that course. There was one particular mindfulness meditation in Dan's ANS Rewire course. It was 40 minutes long, taking you through each sense in the body, one by one, just paying attention to it over the course of 40 minutes. And I stuck to doing that every day and I really had to do it for 30 days before I felt that a real difference was occurring in my symptom experience. And I was doing this again alongside of the physical stuff. I wanna make it clear that anything I'm talking about wasn't the, well, that's the one thing she did and then it worked. I think it all honestly had to happen at the same time, but it still did take a while before I really felt that that was compounding to really induce this feeling of genuine calm in my system and feeling that it had a genuine impact on my symptom experience. One extra factor, a little side note from the nervous system regulation was that I worked with a trauma-informed therapist and she helped me learn a technique called somatic experiencing. It was a way of relating to my symptom experience so that when symptoms were happening, I had something to turn to in order to just feel safe in my body when these intense symptoms were happening, especially when my brain would start to spin out of control of why is this happening, what's triggered this. I was feeling hypervigilant being this constant, constantly on detective mode, trying to figure out what had gone wrong. It's just like doing long division in your mind all the time. That sort of mental energy wasn't something I could spare. So she taught me to relate better to a symptom experience, which I found so helpful. And also just the experience of going through anything really in the past that I felt could be acting as a chronic stressor, just constantly in the background. Again, I, my approach with my recovery was to look at every single area of my life, what could be causing this, especially because going to more traditional doctors, they had nothing for me. I felt, well, I have to look at what is in my control. So the third category I found to be really important was just keeping going, just keep trying the next thing. There were so many times, especially over that, that sort of three year wasteland, as I now refer to it, well, I really felt like giving up. Maybe I'm just a person who has to live at 20, 10 to 20% of their capacity because I would just try thing after thing after thing and get absolutely nowhere. New diet approaches that I would try for six months that didn't feel like it moved the needle at all. Doctors that would prescribe me supplements that again, I'd be six months in, hadn't changed anything. Three main things kept me going. I'd say the first was, it's gonna sound very simple, not breaking the chain on a wall chart. When I had committed to doing a new habit, whether it was a new diet approach, a new way of trying to get back into some form of movement. For example, one thing I did to try and get back into movement was just walk one house down on my road and back. And sometimes that alone would induce a whole symptom experience. But if it didn't, what I would do the next day is do two houses, walk two houses back. But to just keep myself going and to realize how much time had actually passed of doing these habits, especially when there was no positive feedback at first from the habit itself, to give myself some form of reward, I would have a wall chart, which you'll see here, and I would just cross each day that I did the habit. The second strategy, and it's something that if I could go back in time to me in 2019, where I was really distressed, I was wondering what's going on with me, what should I do next? I would just whisper in my ear, start listening to recovery stories and notice the patterns, the themes, reach out to people that you resonate with. This is how I ended up getting in touch with the wonderful woman I mentioned earlier, Christian Danis, who ended up changing the game for me, finding the right team. It's how I even discovered Dan Neufer's ANS Rewire program, which I then ended up taking again, ended up being a really important tool on my recovery. So I think recovery stories, so, so important. And the third one, and funny enough, this ended up being one of the hardest ones, but when I did it, 
it was a huge sense of relief and so I did think was an important part of my code was just reaching out and telling people exactly what was going on and being honest and transparent about how hard it was and asking for help when I needed it. This was hard <laughs> and anybody who's in my touchy subject audience watching this video I want to give you a, a special big thanks because I sent out a newsletter last year um, when I was really really struggling and I felt I really just couldn't be putting videos, articles or newsletters together. At that point it had all just gotten just too much and I let everybody know exactly what was going on and I was overwhelmed with hundreds of, of email replies. I might cry! <laughs> it was really, really meant so much and it was a huge relief to not try and push myself to do something that my body just wasn't able to do at that point and I think it helped give myself actually compassion about the situation and again has been something just to keep going to keep trying the next thing to eventually as I am now recover. Something I haven't mentioned yet is what my recovery looks like. My recovery right now and has been so since about April this year I would say is not even 100% I'd actually say I'm almost 110 to 120 percent of feeling how like I used to feel. I'm not sure my health has ever been this good because something about I think a chronic illness experience is you are forced to optimize all of these areas of your life because there isn't this magic bullet. So by going through and optimizing, finding the right diet that makes me feel the best in my body, optimizing my sleep, optimizing my nervous system regulation work, all of that means that I think now that my personal code to get out of this has sort of been cracked, I now feel that I'm at my best health I've ever been in my life. So that is a wonderful, a wonderful thing. But even this time last year, if you told me that I'd be at this point, I don't even know if I'd have believed you. <laughs> I was, I got so um, entrenched and stuck in it. It felt really like, almost like being in prison in your own body. And so anyway, that is what my recovery looks like now. So there you have it. I hope something there has ended up being helpful in some way. I will put all those tools, those resources that I've mentioned during the video in the description box below feel free to leave a comment if you're also on a chronic fatigue recovery journey really interested to hear how you're going if there's anything in here that's that's resonated with you feel free to pop it in a comment and thanks again for watching the video